Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Counting down to the best rackets of the year. And uh, one I need to mention is the Boom. It's one of the new releases. It's quite rare that a new silo, a new racket line is released. And yesterday I talked about the Wilson shift and I want to make a correction, uh, which was a bit of a stupid mistake on my part, where I thought 99 out of 300 was what Hendrik had on his racket, but it actually was the 99 square inch version and the 300 gram version. So I just didn't get that. I thought it was a limited edition of 300 rackets. Sorry about that. If you haven't seen my Wilson Shift video, which is a new racket coming soon, have a look. It's from yesterday when this is recorded. But today I want to talk about the Boom. Came with a pretty subtle release. A black racket like this came in a cool box. It said, you got this. Uh, as you can see, it kind of had this uh, more squarish shape up here, more flat. They call it the Morph Beam. Uh, Yonex used this in a more extreme version, called it the isometric head shape. And the Boom was born and there are a few rackets. The MP is the 100 square inch, 295 gram, relatively arm friendly frame. I really like this racket quite a lot, but with the booms, there is some string movement in the string bed. They're quite comfortable. So that would be my main pet peeve with these frames. Although they are uh, rackets I, I like and I have been talking about them quite a lot, especially the Pro. Uh, so the Boom MP, uh, easy to use, the swing weight was rather low, so I felt like you always uh, needed to add weight and, and just maybe a few grams, two, three grams up at the hoop. Felt like it played it much, much better. The Boom Pro was another story that was the heaviest racket of the bunch, 310 grams, still relatively arm friendly, 98 square inch racket, 1619 string pattern, and I've been using that uh, the last few days as I'm trying to find my racket for the next season. It's a serious search I'm doing, and the Boom Pro is in the running for sure, because I really like that frame. The Boom Pro and the Extreme Tour, I've done comparisons about these two rackets. They are very similar. I like them both, uh, so I find it quite hard to, to determine. Uh, ideally, I would like to play with a 100 square inch head, because it's more forgiving uh, for the clay court play that I do in, in Spain, for example. But uh, sometimes you, it's sometimes too much of a step to go from what you love with these control-oriented frames all the way to a 100 square inch frame. But most players, I see even some older pros, for example, maybe 40, 50 years old, they've played high-level tennis, ATP level even. They go to lighter, bigger head sizes uh, when they get a bit older. They want a bit more help, a bit more forgiveness, tennis is faster, and a bit more power generally is good, so you should use the technology. Uh, when you can. Doesn't mean that everybody should use a power frame, but uh, it could be worth considering at least uh, because you get some more, uh, more power and forgiveness for free. Uh, so the booms, uh, they have done pretty well. I would say the feedback seems quite good. Talk to a lot of people. I do know advanced players that have made the switch to the boom. The Boom Pro was tried by Lorenzo Musetti. He's the face of the Boom Pro, I would say, but he's still using the Extreme Tour. These rackets, as I said, are very similar, but he couldn't find quite the same control with the, with the Boom Pro, as it has more string movement than the Extreme Tour. That is what I would say is the difference. But overall, uh, they are quite similar in power level and so on. And you can see that on the CPI scale, which is head's power scale, and they will tell you approximately how much free depth you get on your shots. So this is the Boom Pro. Uh, I like it a lot strung with the oh, Lynx right. Tour. I have not customized this one with Lynx Tour. It's 325 swing weight. My sample, as you know, with quality control, there are issues uh, sometimes, and you might get rackets that are off spec, but this one feels close to, to spot on. Uh, like I said, my, my main peeve with this one is, is that it feels sometimes a little bit inconsistent, but Generally, uh, that could be up. To, that could definitely be up to me, and I, that I need to get used to it, or obviously improve my technique and so on. But that would be my only pet peeve. Otherwise, it has nice sound when you hit the ball, no comfort issues, plays a bit like a, a less powerful pure strike, uh, and a frame that should be considered if you're the type of if you're an advanced player that like to attack. Uh, so that is what the Boom Pro is good for. So that's definitely one of the best rackets of the year, in my opinion. The question is if where it will land in the rankings as we move down. But I, I really like this one and come back to it from time to time. 
and it's something I can switch to. The Boom MP, many people liked it, but it was way too light in stock form. I think they could have gone a bit higher because there's also a Boom Team and a Boom Team Light, which is a lot easier to swing and play with. And the Boom MP could probably have been a 300 gram with a little bit beefier swing weight. I think it could have been a, a better racket, but easily sold with some customization uh, this year. What do you think of this new racket silo in Head's lineup? Head do have a lot of rackets, too many perhaps. It's a jungle and that's why I have this consultation service and racket course out there. So go to tennisner.net and click help and you can find out more about those services. Let me know your comments about the Boom MP or the Boom Pro if you've tried them and uh, I will start counting down to more rackets. In my recent video I showed the East 100 which is one of my favorites of course as well. Uh, so I'll deal with that one and some other frames that have been released this year. That's all. Have a nice day and don't forget to play some tennis.